Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to uh, Whiskey Tango Foxtrot Entertainment. Welcome back to my channel. As you may know, my name is Dale. And a uh, little background into the channel, if you guys may not know. I originally started off just doing uh, train videos probably about 11 years ago. Um, over the last couple of years, I've done some fishing videos, I've done some shooting videos here and there. So, if you're a little crooked, I'm sorry. But uh, what I wanted to show you today is, after the last video, I got to thinking. And I've been thinking about this for a while, but every time I go to... Um, I got a buddy that sometimes, every once in a while, lets me use his property for uh, a range day. You know, if you're interested in that, you know, thank you for watching this. Thank you for continued support. Um, it's summer. As much as I like watching trains, I also do like fishing. I do like shooting uh, as well. So I try to bring, you know, a little bit of everything that I like to do into the channel. Uh, we're going to be doing a couple of really cool things coming up. Um, there is a small airport in Port Clinton, up by where I go fishing, uh, over on Sandusky Bay. They are doing, on the same days, on the same weekend, a uh, UH-1 Huey and a AH-1 Cobra helicopter ride. So we're going to go take some videos of that. And also on the same days, on the same days, they are doing um, like a little military vehicle show. Uh, they did one, there was a massive one up in Cleveland, uh, up by the airport, the tank plant show. It was kind of like a homecoming show. Uh, the IX Center that we have up towards the airport used to be a tank plant. So for, uh, I can't remember, I think it was for the 50th anniversary of that. Um, they uh, they invited a bunch of private collectors to bring their vehicles up and I'm pretty sure that uh, it's called the Liberty Aviation Museum at the Ottawa County Airport. It might be Ottawa and Erie County Airport. I'm not 100% sure of that. I'll, I'll have to look it up. Um, but back to what I was originally talking about and what you see behind me here um, so what last time I was at the range, uh, the range that I go to, they have a bunch of little blue barrels that you set targets up on and everything, and they really don't stick, so I came up with a contraption that would work for me. As you may know, it's probably been in a video or two. Uh, they let you shoot, you know, pop bottles, they let you shoot know all kinds of crap they don't let you use exploding targets they don't let you use 50 BMG which shucks because you know I don't have the ten thousand dollars to go buy one but anyways uh, so I figured why not build something as you may have seen in previous videos I can't remember if she's ever been in these videos but I have a Chevy Equinox SUV that I usually haul all my gear in you know when I Obviously, it's my every, I guess, my weekend vehicle because my everyday vehicle is my work truck. Um, but, you know, that's how I get around to go do rail fanning trips, to go do range days, to go do fishing trips. Uh, so, can't really fit something big in, in it. I don't have a trailer that I can't trailer anything. So we need to be able to fit something in my vehicle. And I'm pretty sure this could also fit into smaller vehicles um, as well, you know, like little cars, um, SUVs. As long as you have about six foot from being able to close the, the, the trunk, the tailgate, whatever you have, um, you can probably use this setup. Um, I'm going to go through it. This is actually a two-part video. Uh, today was the build. I already built it. I did not film any of the build. I apologize, but I will go through the steps that I took to build it. So if you guys want to use this idea, go right ahead. 
Um, I'm not going to care. It's I, I think it's a great idea. I've already sent some pictures to some of my um, shooting buddies. They said it's a great idea. Awesome idea, especially if you have smaller vehicles, which a couple of them do have. So, uh, second part of this video, after you know I get done talking and go th going through all this, is going to be tomorrow. Um, I'm going to probably put it all in the same video and, and upload it, um, so that way it's not you know separate. And then we can also test. We're going to A and A, I believe, tomorrow morning, as long as the weather stays fairly decent. Uh, we're going to go up to A and A for a couple hours and test this thing, see how we do. Um, if any of you are into firearms, so you have multiple calibers, you have 22s, you have 9 millimeters, you have 40, 45, 380, 38, 357. You have 223 rifles. You have 308 rifles. I mean, you have pretty much every kind of caliber, you know, every kind of purpose for a firearm. Obviously, I'm not really a big hunter. I've been asked if I wanted to go hunting, and here's the simple answer that I give. I am not against hunting at all. I go fishing. I eat fish. My problem with hunting is, number one, I'm not a very patient man. Number two, I don't have anything against people that hunt. I just, my thought process on this is I would be that person that would go hunting deer, shoot a deer, and then I would feel really, 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 really bad about it. Obviously, I'm the type of person that would eat whatever I would hunt, whatever I catch, if I don't return it back to the wild, which most of the fishing that I do, because I do catfish, largemouth bass, you know, I haven't caught a largemouth bass in God knows how many years, um, you know, all the kinds of fish that I, that I catch, I release, except for two, walleye, perch. That's all I eat. That's all I like. So that's all I eat. So um, I have had salmon before, but usually it's store bought and somebody cooks it for me. So, um, but anywho, I'm going to go through the, the build process and my thought process behind it. See what you guys think. Give me a like. Give me a comment. Let me know awesome idea. Let me know crappy idea. Things that I can improve. So all together, I would probably say. This costs about 50 bucks. Now, that's give or take, plus the tools that you need to put it together. Um, pretty much all you would need to, to put it together at the range is a screwdriver of some kind or a impact driver. This is what I use. Uh, it is a DeWalt 20 volt max. Uh, cordless impact driver um, I bought this with a set of tools I've, I've actually used a bunch of the tools you know just to just to build this I got a drill and everything too um, I bought it as a set a few years ago um, my garage does not have power I live in an apartment complex and this part of the garages do not have power which is very unfortunate so that's why I have a whole bunch of cordless tools. So, in case you're wondering, because I have a perfectly good uh, compound miter saw right there. I have a bunch of corded tools that I could use, but... So anyways, uh, I'm gonna flip the camera around and I'm gonna show you. This is a garage. This is my garage. It is a mess, so. Bear with me, I live in an apartment. Pretty much all my crap is in this garage. So, give me one second. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up. So, the bottom uh, is made out of two inch PVC pipe. Uh, you've got caps on either end. Down at the bottom, there is a, uh, a three-way T. I don't know the actual term for it. 
So my apologies. And then um, this is all the the all these pieces of PVC pipe are two foot long. Um, they come pre-cut. If you buy them at like Home Depot, you can find uh, pre-cut sections. Um, and then what I have is to put these together is I have these uh, little connector things to keep them together. Again, I'm now I wasn't going for looks on this. I was going for functionality. So if you go up, there's a another little end cap in case you want to put another piece on there. Um, I use this contraption for something else, but um, this is actually what I used it for and it didn't really work for what I needed it to. So I kind of used it to go go as a base for, for what I thought would work for me. So um, if I'm gonna zoom in to the floor. If you look, I got tiny holes. Well, they're not really tiny. I think they're about 5 eighths inch holes and I got them on all four of these ends. One, two, three, four. And I'll show you there, I'll show you why in a minute, why I did that, but, so obviously you put all these together, you can use the PVC glue. Um, I think the first time around I used like Gorilla, clear Gorilla glue and a couple of the pieces broke off, so I decided not to use those um, for you know purposes of you know what I what I wanted to again so what I did is uh, you know for these T's I, I kind of messed up on that one to your right but uh, I took a drill and drilled through this part and then stuck the PVC pipe and and took a I think they're inch and a quarter drywall screws and screwed those in there. Um, there's two on the top, there's two on the bottom. Just just for safekeeping, I did that on both sides. Um, you could also, just a thought, instead of using two of these, having this four foot high, because this is sits about four foot high right now. Instead of having that four foot high, you could have it, you know, two foot high, take one of the sections off. Doesn't matter to me. This is just a generic, what I think might work for my situation. So inside these, I took one inch by one inch. Um, I think it's pine, pieces of wood. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find anything tall, uh, you know, six foot. So what I did is I took you know, some eight foot pieces, cut them down to six foot, uh, took four of those and did that. And then two of them go inside here. Then I drilled holes in the front and put the one in one in a quarter inch drywall screws in there. So this is nice and, and secure inside that little hole. So far, I mean, this has been standing up for about a good 20, 30 minutes <clears throat> inside my garage. And hasn't fallen over so I'm kind of thankful for that <clears throat> I did that on both sides excuse me my throat's a little dry um, inside that you know did the same thing and then I took two six foot pieces and put them across you can leave them the full eight uh, this you can leave the full eight if their um, their backstop wall is tall enough you know safety first and everything that's pretty much it. Now the reason I put those holes in there is this. Is you can buy these little tent stakes and yes I didn't clean my floor up yet. I'm working on it. Uh, these are like I think they're like 10 inch long or 8 inch long tent stakes. You can buy them from Walmart, Cabela's, I'm pretty sure there's other places that you can go but Walmart and Cabela's is pretty much the only two spots that I go to you know shout out to them even though they're not you know sponsoring the video because as I said before I'm not sponsored uh, but what I'm gonna do is when I get to the range I'm gonna stick those bad boys in there and I'm gonna you know step on them down 
So that way that's secure to the ground. That way this thing does not flip over because you don't want to be in the middle of shooting and have this big SOB flip over. Now, I don't have any target targets with me, but with my job, I basically have a little limited supply of these little pieces of cardboard, and I have these little, sorry, garage. I have these little cardboard boxes. So, my plan, so my plan is to take these little cardboard boxes, you can probably staple them up like this. I've got a staple gun. So you will need two tools when you're at the range if you do something similar to this. Staple gun to staple these up, or you can even do them down here uh, if you want a lower target, if their, their backstop wall isn't all that high. Um, you can do the targets down here. So staple gun, staple these up here, slap some sticky targets on them or something else. Um, you could also do something like this probably do something like this too. Um, the only unfortunate part is that bar being right there. You might hit the bar. I mean, uh, what I also did is while I was at Home Depot this morning, I actually got like two or three extra um, eight foot pieces of the one by uh, lumber. So that way, in case I do shoot something and it breaks or something, you know, when we're in a in a cold line, I can go out, swap it really quick. Um, I actually got to cut them down and put holes in them. I'll probably do that after I get done filming the video. But uh, like I said, you know, I get these little pieces of cardboard. You can probably just you know pop them on here, throw some targets on here. I mean. These you can use for pistols. Uh, there was the other one I was looking for. Um, pistols, rifles, 22s. I wouldn't recommend using this for a shotgun. Um, I do have a shotgun, but I just I don't really use it anymore. So, um, but yeah, that's it. Um, I thought this was a good idea. Let me know what you think. Um, I honestly don't know if anybody's actually been commenting on any of my videos because I haven't seen any. Um, I'm almost thinking of cheating and having my, one of my friends comment comment on it just to just to see. But I mean, my comments might be turned off. So that's going to be it for right now. The best part, okay, I think I did leave something out. The best part about this is this breaks down and fits in my my equinox so i'll show you how it breaks down well, i'll tell you how it breaks down first one i mean you take all these one little screws out on the four corners then you take that screw that screw that screw that screw out that takes these pieces of one by and you can take them out and then all you have to do from there is these have a, I can't do it because it's all together, but that has a thread on it where I can unscrew this out and then this, hold on, let me zoom out. This piece fits into my car, that piece fits into my car, this piece fits into my car, that fits into my car. That's only four feet. And then these two pieces are six feet. It stands right as is, six five. I just measured it. And then you have four, you have four four foot pieces and then you have four six foot pieces um, that fit in your car. So, so that's gonna be it for this section of the video. Uh, we are going to hopefully get out to A and A tomorrow. Um, I am on call today. I'm literally just waiting for my phone to ring, which really sucks about my job. But hey, whatever, it's a job. Every job has its downfalls. So 
Um, if you think this is a good idea, leave a comment. Hit the like button. Do whatever. Um, and then we are going to see you tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, I'm going to be hitting the range maybe about 9 or 10-ish. So, we're going to hope to see you then. Also, before I leave, um, I just want to let you guys know that I have decided if you're into, if you're watching this and you're into the train watching that I usually do, I am going to do a two trips this year. I decided this the other day. So the first trip I already have planned. The second trip, it's being planned, but it's not 100% at this time. First trip is I live about two hours from Toledo. I'm going to go to Toledo. I've got a couple of buddies that I've talked to. They've given me a couple of ideas on spots where I can go, where I can film, where I won't hopefully get arrested. Um, because, you know, I don't want to do that. So we're going to go to Toledo. That is going to be June, July 20th or July 21st. Not 100% sure. Sorry about the weird angle. You guys are on a makeshift tripod right now. Uh, mine's packed up in my car. But, uh, and then in the fall, I have decided to finally, 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 after about 15 years of train watching, go to Altoona and go to the Horseshoe Curve. So watch out for those videos. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace.